Hello and welcome to TIFO IRL, our new channel. Portugal have just beaten Hungary 3-0, but it wasn't plain sailing. We're going to have a look at Portugal's problems with build-up, why some of their progression was slow, and also a quick look at the role of Bruno Fernandes in this Portugal side and how it differs from how he plays at Manchester United. Before that, uh, I would strongly encourage you to check out the offer that you can see below here. Go to theathletic.com forward slash TIFO football. You can sign up to read The Athletic's content for £1 a month for six months. Uh, it's a fabulous deal. It's really good, strongly advised, so please do go and do that. And uh, without further ado, here's Portugal. So Portugal lined up in a kind of 4-2-3-1. Um, when the team sheets came out, some people thought it was a 4-3-3. It was quite difficult to discern what Portugal's uh, formation in possession was like. Deep build-up was very, very clear, and we'll have a look at that now. But ahead of that, there was a lot of movement, a lot of rotation, but to very little effect. And part of the reason for this is the way that deep build-up progressed. So what was happening was that everything really was going through the fullbacks. Generally speaking, Diaz and Pepe would split quite wide and Danilo Pereira would drop in here to make a, a third centre-back. Sometimes he would drop in on this side instead, but the basic shape was this. Everything that Portugal did in their initial ball progression was to get the fullbacks into space. Part of the reason for this is that although Hungary were playing with a 5-3-2, their wing backs were generally speaking pretty conservative. Uh, any support in the wide areas came from central midfielders pushing out wide, and that meant that the Portuguese fullbacks had a lot of space to run into. So as they look to progress the ball here forwards, what starts to happen is you get, let's just get rid of these arrows here, There'd be a bit of a press from Hungary here. And then you would get the creation of this sort of uh, rhombus shape here. And the fullbacks would be looking to push up, carry the ball. Sometimes they would pass in field and then receive the ball again. But, but so much of what Portugal did was coming through these wide areas and not coming centrally. So ahead of this, the shape that you then start to see, and although Portugal's front uh, four kind of switched around a little bit. This was a sort of general pattern. You get a certain degree of width from, uh, from Jota and Bernardo Silva here. Fernandez would be looking to push up here, Ronaldo would be here, and sort of these guys would sometimes come quite deep here to try and get the ball, and then you start to see this sort of shape arising. And there's nothing wrong with that if there's a lot of movement here and a lot of movement here. But what was tending to happen was that as the inside forwards drifted a little bit further in, it kind of slowed down. Hungary was sitting very, very deep. There was quite a lot of compactness here. And although Portugal had plenty of possession, it meant that they basically had nowhere forwards to go with it. There weren't players running in behind. So, there were only, I think, three or four occasions where Ronaldo, for example, made a really good run in behind onto a long ball from, I think Pepe made one long ball here that Ronaldo was able to run on onto. But that was relatively infrequent. So what you basically get is a massive load of congestion in this area here. Portuguese players kind of in front of this line or trying to find space in here, and it wasn't working. Fullbacks in possession here, that's all well and good. But if there's no movement, if there's no running in behind, it's quite difficult to get crosses that aren't just sort of lumped in. And although Ronaldo's very good in the air, against three centre-backs and an aerially dominant goalkeeper, that's not going to be very effective. So what you'd see instead was Bruno Fernandes drifting out into these wide areas, hunting for the ball, trying to find a bit of space in order to make something happen. Now, this is the sort of position that he will take up at Manchester United, here. So he's quite often in the left half space. You would have, this would be Luke Shaw instead of Guerrero here, and this would be someone like Marcus Rashford. And why that's very effective at Manchester United is that you have runners coming in at pace. So that would be Luke Shaw, he'd be running around here and trying to get 
a ball for a cross-in, or you'd have maybe Rashford is dropping out here and Fernandez is pushing up here, but you have a lot more rotation, you have a lot more movement and running in behind, which obviously Rashford's really good at. Here, unfortunately for Portugal, it was a lot more static. So you had players that were looking to basically dribble towards Hungary, try and force the Hungarian defence back, but there wasn't much penetration behind that. And so Fernandez finds himself out here in wide areas. He had, I think, the, the most touches of any of the offensive players for Portugal, but because there's nothing going on, it's very, very difficult for him to affect the game. And that meant that even when Portugal were up here, where they spent an awful lot of their time, where you would then start to get this kind of shape where uh, there's almost like a square here between the uh, centre-backs and the central midfielders. They could control possession and they could work the ball around side to side, but because this Hungarian backline was so solid and sitting so deep, there's no movement, there's no energy and there's no running in behind. Now, that all changes when Renato Sanchez comes on. Before Sanchez comes on, Silva is taken off for Rafa Silva, who takes this sort of position. Let's move them a little bit back to where they would sort of be. They're supposed to be a bit like that. And then Carvalho comes off and Sanchez comes on. Now, Sanchez has had a really good season for Lille. Uh, he's a dynamic player. And rather than this kind of quite pedestrian, conservative, always looking to pass it wide, very rarely trying to make a progressive pass. You didn't see Pereira trying to hit these sorts of passes through the lines. Sanchez is someone who does look for that pass, but also looks to move at pace into these areas. So if Rafa Silva is coming and tucking inside here, Renato Sanchez is suddenly adding an extra body. So Portugal can still get their fullbacks forwards, they can still get players in these sorts of areas, but all of a sudden there's an additional man and crucially what he's doing is he's moving at pace. He's trying to run in behind or he's trying to create a situation here where he drags the, the wing back wide. That leaves an inside run here which can be made. Also I think importantly was when uh, Andre Silva came on and he came on for Jota here then you have a second additional body who's looking to push the centre-backs backwards. So when you've got a deep line, when you've got a defence that's sitting back and, and trying to make life difficult for you in the space between the lines, that space becomes at a premium. One of the ways that you can do that is to bring on a centre-forward. Silva's very good in the air. He's had a great season for Eintracht Frankfurt. He's looking to push these defenders back. Now that can give Ronaldo a little more space to run into or run across here, but it also means that these midfielders are then caught in two minds because are they sitting even further back here like this, which leaves more space around the edge of the area for long range shooting opportunities? Bruno Fernandes had one good long range shooting opportunity where this happened. So they backed off so far that Fernandes was able to carry the ball forwards uh, and then shoot and force a good low save out of Galachi here. Uh, but generally speaking, as long as there's enough of a gap and the midfield keep their position, it's very, very difficult to find that space in behind. So Silva sort of bumping into these defenders, forcing them back, getting into a position that's closer to the goalkeeper, it's going to open up spaces elsewhere. The same with Renato Sanchez and his ability to make these driving runs it's all about creating space elsewhere. So the goal, you see one of the players dragged over here to help the wing back. Sanchez bursts pass, forces a pass through. No, that's not a pass. That's a pass. And then Rafa Silva is able to come in here and then he plays the little pass. That's not working into Ronaldo and they score a really nice goal. But it, it comes from this dynamism. And that was Portugal's problem throughout until the 80th minute. There was a lack of dynamism. All of the build-up was very slow. It was very ponderous. Lots of side-to-side -side passes. Everything going through the fullbacks, which was really, really predictable and meant that they could sit off, 
the Hungarians could sit off, sit back and know that we'll let you come to this point and then after that you're not going to be able to do very much. As soon as Portugal brought on these more energetic players and brought on a centre forward who could create space for others, they were able to cause Hungary real problems. So what do we infer from Portugal's progress in the rest of the tournament from this? Probably not a lot, except to say that if we get this same sort of very conservative lineup, uh, then let's get rid of some of these guys like this. If we have the lineup that we started with, you're not going to see the best of Bruno Fernandes because he's naturally going to be heading over into these sorts of spaces where potentially, yes, he finds space to do something with the ball, but if there's a, a low block defense or with Germany where they're going to use wing backs, there's not going to be a lot of movement in behind. Bernardo Silva is going to be dropping in. He's going to try and find the ball. Ronaldo's not as energetic at bursting beyond. So it's going to be tricky. I think what Portugal need to do is go back to this dynamic midfield. Sanchez, his ball carrying and his dynamic passing is going to cause a lot more problems for the two better teams, France and Germany, that Portugal have to face later on in the group. And potentially, the use of Andre Silva as a second centre forward alongside Ronaldo, maybe that's a late game thing, but again, against teams where perhaps the, the centre backs are going to look to progress the ball forwards a little bit more, having Silva there as a more physical presence, as somebody who can tie them up, is going to stop the French and German centre-backs from being quite so comfortable carrying the ball forwards, and that will leave more space in between the defence and the midfield, and that's where Bruno Fernandes does his best work for Manchester United, and that's where we might see him do his best work for Portugal. So that's been Portugal's Problems. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I would remind you that Tifo IRL is a new channel, it'd be great if you could support it, like the videos, leave comments, obviously subscribe, and to remind you about that introduction, the uh, athletic.com forward slash Tifo football, one pound a month for six months, it's a fantastic deal. I hope you enjoy the rest of our Euros coverage.